Over the next few weeks, we're going to be examining percents uh, and some of their applications in the real world. This is probably one of the most practical chapters you're going to see. Just a reminder, while watching this video, you should have out uh, your copy of the notes. You're going to fill in uh, you're going to fill in the first page. So make sure you have this out and make sure you're ready to fill this in. Um, I guess any conversation about percents probably should start with a definition of uh, what percents are. I want you to write this at the top of your notes. Um, <clears throat> a percent is a special type of ratio that compares a number to 100. The, uh, the couple key things here, the, the fact that this is a ratio, it's another way to write a ratio, and the fact that we're comparing it to 100. Let me give you an example of what this looks like. Let's say, uh, let me change colors here. Let's say there are 25 kids in the class, 25 students. Uh, 12 are girls, 13 are boys. Now I could write a ratio of girls to the entire class to figure out the relationship of, of girls, to, uh, girls to the rest of the class. So that's 12 to 25. That's a ratio. If I wanted to do a percent, what percent of the class is girls, um, what I would have to do is I'd have to do what we're talking about here, which is converting fractions to percents. I'd have to find a way to make this, uh, this denominator equal 100, um, which we've done before when we converted ratios to decimals, fractions to decimals. So, um, one way is to make the denominator equal 100, so we can multiply top and bottom by 4, so this would be 48% of the class is girls. Now, just a little review here. This, you should have already been able to fill this blank in. By the way, this is just came to mind. If you're struggling keeping up with taking the notes, pause the video. You have the ability to pause this and, and go back and forth, hop back and forth between uh, the video and your note sheets. So pause, rewind. This is like Mr. Lucas on DVR here. So, um, as I was saying, to convert a fraction to a decimal, you should know this already, divide the numerator by the denominator. Remember, just making the denominator equal a power of 10 doesn't always work. Now remember, it's a power of 10. This is going back to chapter 3 because this is a decimal. Deci, root word for 10. So with a percent, we're talking about a special power of 10. It's specifically 100, not 10, not 1,000. Okay? So first step here, if I have a fraction, a.k.a. a ratio, I'm going to divide the top by bottom, and then I'm going to multiply that decimal by 100. So... If I've, got, uh, if I've got a decimal, it's very easy. I just multiply by 100, and that gives it to me as a percent. If I've got a ratio or a fraction, there's two steps. I've got to divide it and then multiply by 100. Very easy to see how we go back the other way. If I have a percent, I just divide by 100, and that gives me the decimal. And then uh, remember to change decimals to fractions. You look at the place value of the last digit, and then that gives you uh, where that should be. So... Um, <clears throat> Just going down here, let's do a couple of these problems. A, you should be able to do these on your own, but if you need help, look, uh, you can follow along with me. 10%, I want to uh, change this to a ratio. Okay, it says find the missing ratio, or if they give you the ratio, find the percent equivalent. So to do that, I've got to go from here to here, and then I can change it to a ratio. So 10%, I'm gonna do 10 divided by 100, and uh, I could do the long division, or that's an easy one, just move the decimal twice, and I get 0.1. Um, so 0.1 is 1, it's in the tenths place, so 10 is my denominator, 1 is my numerator. That's letter A. All right, to go the other way, B, 1 fourth. 
Remember to change a fraction to a decimal, a ratio to a decimal, divide top by bottom. So one inside, four outside. Do a little long division here, even though we know what it is. Got to show the work. And this is 2, and down to 0, 0.25. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do 0.25 times 100. Remember the quick shortcut for multiplying by 100 is to move this twice. This is 25%. Okay? Better see. 40%. Same deal as the first time. I'm going to take 40, divide it by 100. Remember, quick for that, the quick shortcut for that is to do 0.4. That puts 4 in the tenths place. So that's 4 over 10. And then simplify. Don't forget to simplify. You get 2 fifths. I know you guys have uh, memorized a lot of these, um, depending, especially depending on who your sixth grade teacher was. Um, but you do need to know this process. Uh, three fifths, we'll skip that and let's go ahead, or actually let's do three fifths and then we'll, we'll skip ahead to uh, 87 and a half and, and 125. So uh, D, three fifths, so we're gonna skip, we're gonna skip uh, E. Three fifths, three divided by five, because we have a ratio or a fraction, we're gonna change to a decimal. Um, remember, we five doesn't go into three, so we'll add 0 0.0 and five goes into 36 times. So I have 0 0.6 times 100, gives me 60%. That one's pretty easy. Now, F, a little tricky, because to divide this by 100, uh, we have a fraction there. Well, very easy to fix this problem. Instead of writing 87 and a half, let's write 87.5. And then when I divide that by 100, I get 0.875. Now, look at the place value of the last digit. I have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So 1,000 goes here, 875 in the numerator, and then let's try dividing this by 25. See what happens. Calculator here. So 875 divided by 25, 35. And 1,000 divided by 25, 40. 35 fortieths. Oh, let's divide that by 5 again, and you get 7 eighths. Okay? Uh, last one here, 125%. Same process. We're going to take 125, divide it by 100, and that gives me 1.25. Place value of the last digit is a 5. Remember, this 1 means it's going to be a mixed number. 1 is going to be the whole number, and this is going to be 25 one hundredths. Uh, top and bottom by 25, and you get 1 and 1 fourth. If it's over 100%, which is possible. Good morning. Compound to the LGI Friday feast is ready. Sorry about that. It is possible to have greater than 100%. Uh, you are going to have a number that's bigger than 1. Okay? So, now that we've talked about how to convert every which way, Let's get into the actual types of percent problems. Okay, and we're following right along on your note sheet. You might want to pause the video right now. You need to fill in these three blanks right here. Okay, these are the three types. And then you can also fill this blank in here, type one. What percent is this number of this number? Okay, so you can put uh, in the blanks there. Uh, another number. Okay, go ahead and fill that in. Now, um, you should have all those blanks filled in. Remember, I'm going to check your note sheet tomorrow to make sure you did that. This is a very, very easy process. What we're trying to do, if I'm trying to figure out what percent 220 is of 88, I'm trying to figure out a ratio here. Uh, and the English language is set up very, very well for this. Um, the prepositions is and of. One way to think about a, a percent, and I want you to write this down, is that it is a part of a whole. It's a way to describe the part to the whole thing. Think about our example of the percentage of girls in the class. The girls is the part of the class, the whole is the entire class. You wouldn't do the percent, what percent of the boys are the girls? That wouldn't make sense. 
Um, but if we do of the whole thing, then we can get a percent here. So the word of means that's what you are of, that's where you're coming from. So that's like the whole thing. That's why, notice, of and whole are both on the bottom. So the number that is closest to the word of is going to be your whole thing. Is is like the part. It's like the, 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 the part that we're trying to examine. So to set up the ratio, you're going to remember, I want you to box this in. This would be a very, very important ratio for you. Is over of times 100. Um, so just quickly to set this up. Notice, this is kind of process of elimination. If you look at is, yeah, it's the same distance from both of these, so we can't really use that. But notice, 88 is not closer to of than 220 is. So obviously, 220 is my uh, is. I'm actually going to move this over here so that I can show my work algebraically. Remember, we want to go uh, up and down, not side to side. So 220 is closer to of. Okay, which leaves 88 to go on the top. So I'm going to do 88 divided by 220 times 100. Remember, if I have a, right now I've got a ratio, and I'm going to convert that ratio to a decimal by dividing it, and then multiplying by 100. So it's the same process we just did. The only trick here, the only thing we're doing here, is we're, we're finding a trick for setting up the ratio. All right, so dividing that out. Here we go. 88 divided by 220, 0.4 which tells me that 220, or I'm sorry, 88 is 40% of 220, okay? So we're going out of that 220, and we have 40%, that's 88. So next question, 56, change colors here, 56 is what percent of 12? This one's a little bit more obvious. Obviously, 56 is closer to is, and 12 is closer to of. So notice here. We have a, a bigger number being taken out of a smaller number. So in your mind, you should start to see what type of percent we're going to get here. We get 56 divided by 12 times 100. Notice this is going to give me a percentage larger than 100. So 56 divided by 12. Let's round that to... Uh, we want to keep the hundredths place. Because remember, we're going to multiply by 100. So this decimal here is going to move twice. So we at least want to keep that hundredths place. Remember that for, uh, for rounding. So we're going to go 4.67 times 100, which is 467%.